Okay, dear student, let's see what is there in this question. A toy rocket <clears throat> is made from a plastic bottle that contains some water. Air is pumped into the vertical bottle until the pressure inside forces water and air out of the bottle. The bottle then travels vertically upwards. The air water mixture is called propellant. The variation with time of the vertical velocity of the bottle is shown in this graph. The bottle reaches the highest point at T1 on the graph. T1 is shown here <coughs> and returns to the ground at the time T2. So T1 and T2 are shown on the graph. The bottle then bounces the motion of the bottle after the bounce is shown as dashed line. Estimate using the graph the maximum height of the bottle. Okay, so we have to estimate the maximum height of the bottle. See, so the maximum height will be the maximum displacement that is taken place while the rocket is going into the upward direction. So they have clearly mentioned that thing in, in the question itself that at T1, the rocket has reached its highest position. And we can clearly see that the velocity is always positive. So the upward direction is taken to be positive, it means. And until the velocity becomes negative, the rocket is not changing its direction of motion. It means it keeps on moving up. So what is actually happening, you see, up to this point, the velocity is increasing. But after that, the velocity starts reducing, but still velocity is positive. So the body is still rising in height. So <clears throat> if we want to find the total height or the distance, uh, there is only one thing that we can do. This is the velocity time graph. So we will find the area uh, under the graph for the VT graph up to T1 because we are only interested in the maximum point. So this is the area that we want to find. Now, this line which is drawn here, it doesn't seem to be a straight line. It, it seems to be curvilinear. But uh, because like this is uh, the laptop, I'm not using a PDF. Uh, you would be having the PDF or the question paper there. So in the question paper, what you do, you can use the ruler and you can see like what is uh, the value that is coming there. And accordingly, you can uh, perfectly think and perfectly measure it, whether it is a straight line or not. But we can assume it to be a straight line. And now we can say that, yes, it is a triangle, almost a triangle. And we will apply the formula for the area of a triangle, which is half into base into height. So what is the base of the triangle? So this value is clearly 1.2. And the velocity is clearly 12. So this is the answer. So the answer is coming out to be 7.2 meters. So 7.2 meter is the maximum height that was achieved here, 7.2. And that should be the correct answer. Let's see what is written in the mark scheme. Yes. So 1A and yes, the mark scheme says that the answer is 7.2 meter. Alternative 2 is uses the area of the equation of either triangle. Okay. Anyways, so this is the method that we employed and we found the correct answer. Let us move to the next question now. Estimate the acceleration of the bottle when it is at its maximum height. So we want to find the acceleration now. So the another other thing that um, we know about the velocity time graph is that with the help of velocity time graph, we can find the distance or the displacement by finding the area under the curve and we can find acceleration by finding the slope at that moment. So the question is what will be the acceleration at the highest point? It means at T1. So, like theoretically speaking, like if this is a projectile motion that we are considering, so at the highest position, there is only one force which is acting on it and that is weight, which is actually the definition of a projectile motion. What is the definition? How do we define projectile? When a body is thrown with an initial velocity at some angle with the horizontal, okay, and once it is thrown, the only force which is acting on the body is weight. No other force is acting on it. Yes, drag force can be there, but we are not even considering drag force in the ideal cases. So that motion <clears throat> only under gravity is known as projectile motion. 
So we are actually referring to a projectile motion. And clearly, once the body leaves your hand, the only acceleration that is undertaken by the body is equal to the acceleration due to gravity. So your answer will be equal to 9.8 meter per second square without any doubt. But it is not given whether the drag force is to be included or not or something. But this is just kind of IA that a student is doing and he has created this graph. So now this graph is very practical. Like practically, this is the data that you are getting. So to find the actual value of uh, the acceleration, we have to find the actual slope of the line that you have here. Let's see what is the slope that we are getting. So at this point, like we do not want to go very far away because it will be somewhat like this. So if you are having a ruler and you can draw this line here, which is passing through T1, which is actually the tangent here, and you can try to find the slope of that tangent. Otherwise, what we can do, uh, because like I am doing this thing on digitally on PDF or something. So what I'm doing is I will choose the minimum of the squares possible like this square here. So it's kind of two squares vertical and two squares horizontal. And I will find it and I will find the tangent theta. So the tangent theta can be written as two squares in the upward. So it is like two meter per second and two squares on the x-axis that will be 0 0.2 so yes so the answer is indeed coming out to be equal to 10 meter per second square so that should be the correct answer like either 10 or 9.8 that should be accepted let us see what is there in the mark scheme uh, attempt to calculate the gradient so you are going to find the gradient means slope at the time t is equal to 1.2 and the answer is 9.8 so that is what is happening yes it will be negative because the acceleration will be in the downward direction so it will be negative now can i say that this will be positive let me tell you see when they are already saying that this velocity is positive it means that they have chosen upward direction as positive and downward as negative so clearly the acceleration is in the downward direction that has to be reported in the negative side that is why it will be negative so no doubt about that let us now move to the next question the bottle bounces when it returns to ground calculate the fraction of kinetic energy that remains after the bounce okay so the fraction that remains after the bounce so the bounce is taking place uh, at t2 like at t2 it is hitting the ground and immediately the velocity which was negative like the bottle was going down immediately it starts going the into the upward direction so the new velocity achieved is here and we will see what is this velocity so this velocity can be approximately taken to be equal to 10 but it's a bit more than 10 but I don't know, should we take 10.1 or 10.2? Let us go with 10. So the initial kinetic energy is half m v square. And the final kinetic energy will be half m. This is clearly the midpoint of this. So we will be taking it as 4.5. And you want to find the ratio, ratio of the energy which is left that remains after the bounce so clearly we have to find the ratio of these two so the ratio here it will be 4.5 divided by 10 square and that's it this will be our answer so 4.5 square uh, calculate the fraction of the kinetic energy that remains after the bounce. Yeah, it, they are not talking about the loss of kinetic energy. This will be the correct answer. Let's see what they have done in the mark scheme. Exactly the same thing. The final velocity divided by initial and the square. So this is 4.5. Clearly, the velocity is taken as 10. Plug in the value and it is coming out to be 1 by 5, which is 20% of the final value of the initial value it means 20 percent is remaining 80 percent of the kinetic energy is lost during the bounce okay let us now move to the next question the mass of the bottle is now 27 grams 
it is in contact with the ground for 85 milliseconds now whenever the time duration of the contact is given they always talk about impulse let us see if they're talking about the impulse only determine the average force exerted by the ground on the bottle give your answer to the appropriate number of significant figures okay so the time is given uh, are they talking about impulse now from impulse we can find the average force yes we can do that yeah so in the case of impulse let us see the formula is f dot dt and this is equal to the change in momentum so we will find the change in momentum from the graph and delta t is given and with this we would be finding the f this f is always average force this is how we do it and so let us find the delta momentum so it is m into v final minus v initial so uh, one direction has to be taken positive so upward direction was taken positive downward was taken negative so initial velocity before it is hitting the ground is downwards finally it is going up yes so the final velocity will be positive but downward will be negative so the both of them will be added mass is 27 grams so this is going to be the equation for us uh what was the value the final velocity was 4.5 and the initial velocity was 10 this is the mass f average we do not know we want to find a delta t is 85 milliseconds this should give us the answer well okay so you can do this thing by yourself uh, because um, i will not be doing the calculations now we will just move directly to the mark scheme this is milli this and this gets cancelled out accordingly you can find the f okay i have the calculator just a moment 27 multiplied by 14.5 divided by 85 so i am getting the answer as 4.6 newtons let's see what is the answer in the uh, mark scheme 4.6 yes absolutely correct attempt to use the momentum change divided by time so this is the momentum change divided by time this is exactly what we did but i did it from the point of view of impulse and they did it from the point of view of like f is equal to delta p by delta t that's it like they're you are just using the second law of thermodynamics uh, sorry newton's second law of motion and uh, i am using the concept of impulse that is the only difference but the formula used is exactly the same so this is how we do it and answer will always be given to two significant figures i don't know why ib is really fond of two significant figures that is why so let us go for okay there is a reason for that so uh, otherwise you will say that uh, varun sir don't know the reason that is why i'm telling you <laughs> so listen to this actually what happens whenever we are doing this kind of calculation now uh, when there is multiplication and uh, divisions involved so there are different uh, uh, like things like like, like uh, this is having two significant figures this is having two this is having three significant figures so whenever we are doing this kind of calculation we report our answer in the minimum number of significant figures so in this case the minimum number of significant figures are two like 4.5 the two significant figures that is why a round off is important and we will always report our answer in two significant figures usually ib is always using two significant figures so even if you don't know it just try to report the answer in two significant figures here okay that is the thing let us now move to the next question the maximum height reached by the bottle is greater in the air water mixture than with high pressure air in the bottle assume that the speed at which the propellant leaves the bottle is the same in both of the cases explain why the bottle reaches a greater maximum height with an air water mixture so it is given that the speed at which the propellant leaves is the same so this also we have done like um, you can refer to uh, the online course also i have given these things uh, so there is a force which is reaction force i have already discussed this in my online course f is equal to v dm by dt this is the formula that we use for the reaction forces 
So whenever there is some kind of rocket propulsion system is going or some kind of mass flow rate is there, that is a hint that we are going to think about the reaction force and this is what we do. So in both of the cases, the velocity is the same, the rocket, the velocity with which the mass is coming out of the rocket, it is the same. And it says that the velocity reached is more in the case of air water mixture. Obviously, why? Because dm by dt, the rate of the mass flow, because water air mixture is having more mass. So more mass is coming out in lesser time or in the same time. So when more mass is moving out, it is, it is creating bigger magnitude for the reaction force. And that is why the rocket would be moving uh, at a higher height. That's it. And the reason is mass flow rate is more in the case of air water mixture. That's it. You can get two marks if number one, you would be giving this formula. Number two, you will explain it. So you would be getting two marks for this. Let us see what is given in the mark scheme. Yeah, mass leaving the bottle per second. So mass flow rate He's talking about mass flow rate will be larger for air water mixture. The momentum change is force which becomes greater. So the formula that I'm giving you even this is this is actually momentum change, isn't it? M into dV is basically momentum. So you're talking about the rate of change of momentum, which is force. So this is the explanation for this. Uh, okay, so this is the last question for question number one. And thanks for watching. Please uh, tell your like, uh, please uh, share the video with all your friends. And thanks for joining. See you in the next video. All the best. Bye.